In a resplendent cloud, the Holy Spirit appeared. The Father's voice was heard. This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the wondrous feast of the transfiguration of our Lord Jesus Christ, this beautiful moment when he allowed his great divinity to shine forth his sacred humanity. Let us acknowledge our sins that we may worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten Son, confirm the mysteries of faith by the witness of the fathers, and wonderfully prefigured our full adoption to sonship. Grant, we pray to your servants, that listening to the voice of your beloved Son, we may merit to become co-heirs with him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. As I watched, thrones were set up, and the Ancient One took his throne. His clothing was bright as snow, and the hair on his head as white as wool. His throne was flames of fire, white with wheels of burning fire. A surging stream of fire flowed out from where he sat. Thousands upon thousands were ministering to him, and myriads upon myriads attended him. The court was convened, and the books were opened. As the vision during the night continued, I saw one like a son of man coming on the clouds of heaven. When he reached the Ancient One and was presented before him, the one like a son of man received dominion, glory, and kingship. All peoples, nations, and languages serve him. His domin dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not be taken away. His kingship 
shall not be destroyed. The word of the Lord. The Lord is King, the Most High over all the earth. The Lord is King. The Lord is King. Let the earth rejoice. Let the many islands be glad. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Justice and judgment are the foundation of his throne. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his justice, and all peoples see his glory. Because you, O Lord, are the most high over all the earth, exalted far above all gods. A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Beloved, we do not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we had been eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honor and glory from God the Father when that unique declaration came to him from the majestic glory. This is my son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. Moreover, we possess the prophetic message that is altogether reliable. You will do well to be attentive to it as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. The word of the Lord. Blessed are those who hear. This is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus took Peter, James, and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, conversing with him. Then Peter said to the Jesus in reply, Lord, it is good that we are here, if you wish. I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud covered, cast a shadow over them. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate and were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise and do not be afraid. And when the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else there but Jesus alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, Do not tell this vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It is a very old tradition to chant the Gospel on feast days. So I hope 
Uh, my chanting doesn't offend you. I do my best for the Lord. My basic motto is if God gave you a bad voice, let him hear it. Today, so beautifully, we celebrate this moment where our Lord takes Peter, James, and John by themselves up a high mountain. Remember, Peter, James, and John are the inner circle of the inner 12. These are the three that the Lord reveals some of the most intimate things to. He allows them to see both the transfiguration and his sweating of blood. He allows them to see both the great glory on Mount Tabor and the great agony in the garden. They get to witness both events. Taking these three, they go up the mountain. Now Jesus just told them that he's about to be crucified, that he's gonna to go to Jerusalem, that he would be rejected, that he'd be scourged, he'd be beaten, and that he would be put to death. And so the apostles were a little anxious about heading towards Jerusalem, like, you know, maybe we shouldn't go. <laughs> Peter even tried to stop our Lord saying, God forbid, it ain't gonna happen, and the Lord had to put him in his place. Remember, Peter, you're second in charge, not in charge. You're the vicar, not the Christ. <laughs> you know, Peter had to be reminded of that. Well, he takes them up Mount Tabor. And as they're praying, the three of them look up, and all of a sudden they see Jesus transfigured in glory. Did you ever look directly into the sun? I'm sure you had. How painful it is to look at the the sun, and yet we're always drawn to it because of the brightness of it, the beauty of it, the strength of it. Well, it says here in scripture that Jesus' face shone like the sun. Think about that. His face shone like the sun. If you're Peter, James, and John, and all of a sudden you're getting blasted with the brightness of the full power of the sun, you would not even be able to look. They could not even look upon the face of Jesus because it had become as radiant as the sun. And his clothes, white as light. It's hard for us to even picture light in itself, but white as light, the clearness, the beauty, and the glory of how he shows himself to them. This incredible beauty of his divine majesty shining through his human nature. In the book of the Old Testament, we read today from the book of the prophet Daniel, who is in exile in the 300s BC, who is beholding the glory of God, and he says he sees one like the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven. And he describes the beauty and the power, the dominion of the Son of God. And here, 300 and some odd years later, Peter, James, and John are beholding not a vision of the Son of God but beholding the Son of God himself incarnate and the fullness of his divine nature shining through his human nature. Peter even says today in the second reading, we have the reading from the letter of St. Peter, he, re he recounts it in his letter. For we received, he received honor and glory from God the Father when this unique declaration came to him from the majestic glory. He calls this vision on transfiguration on Mount Tabor the majestic glory the majestic glory of the revelation that the man whom they've been walking with for the past three years was no mere man. Peter declared him to be the Son of God and all of a sudden now Peter is beholding the glory of the Son of God on Mount Tabor. And they don't know what to say. They're just dumbfounded. As all of a sudden standing next to our Lord, Moses and Elijah. Why these two prophets? Why Moses, why Elijah? Well, no other prophets in the Old Testament ever worked the mighty deeds that Elijah and Moses worked. These are the two most powerful prophets of the Old Testament. And here they were flanking our Lord, giving him honor, reverencing him as God. And so for the apostles, they're recognizing that these great prophets of old are recognizing one more powerful than themselves, the, what, recognizing the one from whom they receive their power to do great things, Moses and Elijah. We know from Luke's gospel, they were talking about our Lord's crucifixion and discussing it. But it's interesting about these two guys too is that they're both prophets of bread. They both had important moments 
dealing with bread that prefigured the Eucharist. I can't get into that tonight. It would take us way too long, but you know, I'd love to go long. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna resist the temptation. But there were all prophets, prophets of bread that pre did things that prefigured the Holy Eucharist. And of course, our Lord himself will give himself to us in the Holy Eucharist. These two great prophets also had a lot to do with water. Remember Elijah saw the end of the drought of the cloud that brought down the great rains and Moses split the Red Sea and gave water from the rock. And here's our Lord Jesus Christ who is the rain of grace upon the world, who is about to split the sea between heaven and earth and reopen the way and the path back to the glory of God and is about to bring forth from his own sacred side the saving waters of baptism on Calvary when he will be struck to bring forth the saving waters from his own sacred side mingled with his own sacred blood. This beautiful moment. Now Peter just can't keep his mouth shut. <laughs> There's a certain times when you just got to be quiet, right? There's certain times when you're seeing something so glorious you just sit back and go, that's it, nothing more you got to say. But Peter can't resist. He got to open his mouth. And the other gospel writers say, Peter hardly knew what to say. Well, Peter, maybe you shouldn't have been saying anything. But yeah, of course, Peter has to. And he says, Lord, it is good for us that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here. One for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. Create these three places to memorialize the moment of the transfiguration. And all of a sudden, a bright cloud covers them and we hear the Father's voice. You know what's interesting? In the Gospels, God the Father speaks three times. Three times God the Father speaks. When Jesus is baptized in the Jordan, he comes out of the water and the Father speaks. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. This second time on Mount Tabor, when our Lord says, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased, listen to him. And the third time he will speak when Jesus asks the Father to glorify him, and the Father says, I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. Three times God the Father speaks in the Gospels. Three times those surrounding Jesus hear God the Father testify the fact that this man is the eternal Son of the Father. The one seen by Daniel the prophet, the one prophesied who would deliver us from sin and death. The bright cloud covers them, which is a symbol of the Holy Spirit, in the Father's voice, this is my beloved Son. Listen to him. Listen to him. And what does Jesus say to them? Rise and do not be afraid. So God the Father just said, listen to him. And what does Jesus say to them? Rise and do not be afraid. And so, we have to listen to Jesus. So beautifully you and I have been brought to the waters of baptism. So beautifully you and I have become children of God. So beautifully you and I have received sanctifying grace. So beautifully you and I have become adopted sons and daughters of God and have been blessed beyond measure. We sinful, broken creatures, we dust of this earth, have been granted divine life by God through the gift of the sacraments, by his death, by his resurrection, by the gift of the sacraments, you and I are no longer citizens simply of this world. But you and I have become citizens of the glory of the kingdom of heaven, brothers and sisters and co-heirs with Jesus Christ to the glory that is to be given to us. As much today is a feast of God's great divinity shining through his human nature, it is also a promise of God to us that if we die in that state of grace, we persevere in that holiness, that glory that Jesus shows forth today will shine forth from us when we enter into the glory of that kingdom. When our bodies are resurrected and restored to us, our own bodies will shine forth the glory of God. Maybe not as majestic as Christ's, but quite a bit. It's not only just about Jesus' transfiguration. It's about a promise made to us. Sinful and broken that we are. 
Listen to Jesus. And what does Jesus say to us? Rise and do not be afraid. Rise up to be who you are in Christ. Rise up to live as a daughter of God. Rise up to live as that son of God. Rise up and live in this world as an heir to the glory of the kingdom of heaven. Rise in such a way as to be worthy of the gospel we have received. Rise and recognize your dignity in Christ Jesus. We listen to our Lord who tells us to rise, and we rise, we both behold the cross, and we know our worth, and we live out that dignity, and we're not afraid. We have a holy reverential fear as the, the virtue of fear of the Lord, but it's a holiness fear, not a fear of God in a way that is unhealthy. It is a holy fear. But we're now children of God, and we're not to be afraid, for the Father loves us and has prepared for us the glory of the kingdom. Do not be afraid, for we are loved. We are loved by God unto death. We are loved by God unto life. We need to live in that love, die in that love, and we shall reign with he who is love. May God bless you and Mary keep you. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given in human hands of me. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept the sacrifice of my hands, for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and good of all His holy church. Sanctify, O Lord, we pray, these offerings here made to celebrate the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten Son, and by His radiant splendor cleanse us from the stains of sin, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly really right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he revealed his glory in the presence of chosen witnesses and filled with the greatest splendor that bodily form which he shares with all humanity that the scandal of the cross might be removed from the hearts of his disciples and that he might show how in the body of the whole church is to be fulfilled what so wonderfully shone forth first in its head and so with the powers of heaven we worship you constantly on earth. And before your majesty, 
without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this oil and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for me, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei, Motem Tuam Annunciamus Domine, Et Tuam Resurrectionem Confitemur, Donet Venias. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we all feel, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Benedict, our Pope Emeritus, Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. We may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously, grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should have come to my room, but only say the word and my soul shall be blessed.
When Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Let us pray. May the heavenly nourishment we have received, O Lord, we pray, transform us into the likeness of your Son, whose radiant splendor you will to make manifest in his glorious transfiguration, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Reminder that tomorrow is First Friday, so after Mass, there will be exposition of the Blessed Sacrament for the Litany to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, the By Mercy Chaplet, praying in reparation for sins against our Lord's Sacred Heart, particularly sins against our Lord in the Holy Eucharist. And so that'll be tomorrow morning after Mass is our usual First Friday, back up and running. It's good to be back for the First Friday. It's back in church, back going to Mass again. Thank you all so much for coming out in the evening. And we finally got a cool evening to be out here for Mass, so thanks be to God for that. And um, so, and also, uh, tonight was, you know, uh, a beautiful way of coming together to pray on the Feast of the Transfiguration. But I also want you to remind a, a reminder for you to think about inviting people to come back to church with you. You know, people you don't know have been to church in a long time, they've been away, just put the invite out there. Maybe it's your kids, maybe it's a sibling, uh, maybe it's your grandkids, maybe it's some old friend. Uh, invite them, you know, and also invite them back to the Holy Sacrament of Confession. I'm not a mean guy in the confession, I promise. I like to laugh. And God's mercy is always joyful, so, so please, uh, Start thinking about ways in which we can start inviting people back to church safely, safely. The COVID, the whole COVID, you know, it's not thinking of a jiggy. But uh, particularly, I'm thinking about those who have haven't been to church in many, 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 many years to figure out a way to draw them back to the sacraments that they too might know the mercy of God and His goodness in the Holy Eucharist. The Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Say, Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke you, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.